Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Waller's Wallet, and welcome back to my monthly live stream Q&A where we talk about a couple things, and I take your questions. If you're first time here to the channel, this channel is all about credit cards, credit card rewards, and showing how to use your points and miles to travel for less. So I'd interest you, consider subscribing, turn that bell notification on as well. Also, consider giving this live stream a thumbs up. It helps the channel out. It brings more people in. But, you know, let's jump right into it because I, I really do want to get to your questions, so be sure to leave your questions because this is why I do it, you know, answer a live uh, Q&A in real time. So Delta Vacations, if you haven't already heard, Delta Vacations, they're extending that promotion of vacation packages to where you basically are redeeming your Delta Sky Miles at two cents per point through September 6th. And I think this is an absolutely fantastic deal because I typically value life my, or Sky Miles right around 1.3 cents per point. And although I typically get inflated value here out of Bangor, I typically receive right about two cents per point because Delta prices here are really expensive. Realistically, for everyone else, they're valued more in that one point. I mean, you can get them as low as one cent per point when you have the pay with miles function, but you know, about 1.3 cents per point. So being able to be able to redeem these, this is an absolutely great value for these. And if this isn't in for airfare, you're also getting some really awesome value, including your hotels. You know, I was actually looking at a couple options flying out of Bangor, uh, because winter here is really suck, and I really wanted to get out of here in the winter time. So I was actually looking around. I was looking to book two tickets or two adult tickets and a lap infant down to Miami down in January. I was actually able to. It, there's options right now to book two tickets, including three nights at the Intercontinental for just sixty thousand miles. Now I could get that as low as fifty thousand miles, but I really don't want to get that at eleven p.m. I'd rather get there at three p.m. So to me, that's worth the extra ten thousand miles. And when I priced this out individually, it was 33,500 miles per person just for the flight. And with that in mind, I'm getting even better value because it's just 60,000 for the two of us and like 40 bucks. And that includes three nights at the Intercontinental. And if you were, if you were to go look it up right now, that Intercontinental is 40,000 points a night. So I'm saving 120,000 points. Absolutely fantastic deal. Not even just, not just for travel here in the U.S., but some really solid international routes as well. So I would definitely take a look at those because that is being extended until September 6th. Totally worth doing. Two cents per point. Great value for Delta Miles. One thing you do want to keep in mind, though, if you're someone who's going to be transferring your membership reward points out to your Delta Sky Miles account, you are going to pay that excise tax of 0. 0.0006 cents per point up to $99. So you do want to take that into account. But one thing I'm going to give Delta credit for is... Hey, thank you. Uh, how to get an 800 credit score. I appreciate the, the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, I, I hope you're having a great evening as well. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, and one thing I, I'm going to give Delta big credit for is these flash sales have just been killing it. I mean, right now there is, um, I, I saw right before we went live, 40,000 points from the West Coast round trip over to Asia. Boston, which is pretty close to me. I mean, it's a four hour drive, but 42,000 miles round trip over to is it Shanghai or Beijing. I think both of them, which is a solid value. So they've been really killing it. What I'm actually hoping to see too, is that because United typically follows Delta in their footsteps is that we're going to see United have some sort of flash sale deal as well. I've already seen that kind of like with American as well as they do these web specials, which they've had some, it's in, it's kind of weird on their pricing. Some are really awesome and some are just really crappy. I mean, I was looking the other day, it was 5,000 miles away for one, one of like one flight, but there's like 78,000 miles for the web special when it was only like 25,000 for standard, standard uh, economy. So it's got a hit or miss with it. We see that with Delta as well. And also with uh, programs like flying blue that have gone dynamic, just the nature of the game, but definitely keep an eye out for these. Cause I'm hoping to see more of these flash sales, um, flash sales, or even these other promotions going on. I guess that's one benefit of not having an award chart. They can do this, although overall it sucks. Um, let's talk about city prestige changes. So we all know that the prestige had some big changes recently, but if you're someone who is holding the prestige, tomorrow goes into effect of the fourth night free benefit being adjusted, reduced, devalued, whatever you want to call it, down to twice a year. You're going to have to book through that transfer or through the travel portal. So if you have the prestige, remember it's now one cent per point. There is data point showing if you hold the premiere as well, you're still getting 1.25 cents per point, but it's only going to be good for twice per year. Right now you can call in, you can do it through their concierge, you can book it through the portal, and you're unlimited to the times you can do that. Starting tomorrow, twice a year, 
So if you have the prestige and you have a bunch of hotels you want to book, I would get on doing that this evening because that's going to end tomorrow. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, um, and I think I, I, it, this is going to affect, I think, a small number of people, but American Express is implementing, I think, a way to really combat people selling miles or you know adding people and taking them off real fast with authorized users and transferring of points. So if you don't already know, so right tomorrow, American Express is making this change that their terms and conditions are changing basically to say, says we're changing the membership reward terms and conditions to provide that an additional card must be issued to an additional card member at least 90 days prior to linking your membership reward program account to that membership reward frequent flyer customer account. That's a really fancy way of saying someone needs to be an authorized user on your account for 90 days before you can transfer your points out to that person's frequent flyer account. That includes if it's a spouse, someone living at your address, anybody who's a free, uh, whoever is maybe an authorized user on your account. So if you're w worried about 524, for example, and you have like, let's say the Blue Business Plus, you can add that person to as an authorized user on your account, and then you should be good tonight. If you wait till tomorrow, they're going to have to wait 90 days, which, you know, if, for example, when we booked our tickets over to Amsterdam and Brussels, I booked it through my wife's account because she had a bunch of Sky Miles sitting there. So I just had to basically top up her account. If I didn't have an authorized user, I wouldn't have been able to do that because I'd have to wait 90 days starting tomorrow. So you definitely want to add them to your account tonight. Remember, I know people are worried about adding authorized user to the 524, but the, system, the computer system might reject it at first. But when you speak to somebody in the reconsideration line, you let them know you're an authorized user. Most of the time, if you get a good rep, they're not going to count that against you. If they are, you definitely want to just hang up call again. Uh, but if you don't do that, that can really hinder you on some of these deals, especially when we see, for example, a 40% bonus to Avios. And I know you can combine Avios with families and friends, you know, as long as they're part of your pool. But you're definitely having to maneuver around this if you don't. And it can really impact you in booking uh, award travel. So, um, you know, if, if we have till tonight, if you have business accounts, add someone to your account. It's not going to, you know, hurt their 524 status. Um, and frankly, I think it, it's a bigger thing if you don't add someone in there. Um, all right. Those are kind of the big points. Now I wanted to get to some Q and A. So let's, I had a couple things. Let's see what's going on. What's up, Charles. How's it going, man? All right. Let's see. D Anderson. I have Delta gold sky miles, 69,500 5, 69, miles. That's good for what? Almost $1,400 right now with the vacation packages, D Anderson. So if you haven't looked at it and you're looking to burn some miles, that's a real, that's a solid amount. I mean, it's going to take off two cents per point. You're going to be able to use them however you want. And whatever the balance is left over, you can just pay cash for with a card. Um, you know, you can use some of your travel credit depending on what they are. You know, if you are someone who holds the altitude reserve, you can pay with it. You should be able to still use your real time, mobile time, real time mobile rewards on that. So you have a lot of ways to stack here, but $1,400, you know, I've seen some people getting some really good value to Europe, to Asia, in the U.S., is uh, how I would probably do it to help you search airfare, go to Google flights, type in your home airport and kind of look at the map itself and look for those cheap airfares. I would definitely, um, I would filter by sky team or Delta if you can do that. And then I would look to see where the cheap flights are and I would go from there. Also one thing to consider, cause it's a paid fare for in this, in this instance, you're also going to earn miles, earn stat or miles towards your status as well. So you might not get the benefits for your hotel status because it's, it's, I think it should be going through like a third own OTA, but always worth asking. I've gotten my, I've gotten my status benefits before doing that. It's hit or miss. Most of the time you're not, but you know, you might even get your welcome amenity. So 1400 bucks to Anderson, totally worth taking a look at it, man. Cause that is a really good value as opposed to, you know, if you just pay with miles, it's basically almost $700. So we're doubling our value here. Great promotion. Definitely. I would take a look at that. What's up P Gil? How you doing, man? Thanks to you. My wife also got her altitude reserve. Um, Esta, that's fantastic. I am a big fan of my altitude reserve. It has been my go-to card. I'm actually crunching numbers for a video on how it stands so far this year uh, for me. And like, it, you know, is it looking to be worth it for year two? Um, and just like, just, just quickly looking at it, it's, it's just fantastic. I mean, I'm, I earned, I think I'm earning on like the past couple months on average, like close to six to 7,000 points a month. As I get into travel season, I call it my travel season, but like we do a lot of traveling in the fall, winter time, triple points everywhere. I know I'm going to be using it a lot when I go to London next week. And then in a month, month, in about a month, when we go to Amsterdam and Brussels, I'll be using it a lot there. So I know it's going to get a lot of use. It's getting a lot of use now. And like, it's just, it's just my favorite car. Like, it's just fantastic. So I'm happy she got it. 
Um, and hopefully she gets a lot of use and benefit out of it as well. Let's see. All right, let's see. Question, question, question. Um, are they going to upgrade the green card at all? Charles, that's a good question. They keep pushing that damn thing back. I think we're last I heard is September is when they should be updating it. I'm hoping it comes around because I think it's going to be a great card for a lot of people. And if you're someone who's kind of holding on to a gold card or platinum card to the product change, you know, I'm really hoping we see that soon uh, because I, it sounds like it's going to be a good card. And like I've already had the bonus once, but if it if the Amazon membership is accurate, I'll get it without the bonus. Again, it's a charge card. I'm not too worried because I'm already past 524, so I don't really care. Uh, I'd probably stack it with a credit card with them to have uh, just to just a great two in one day. Um, hopefully September. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm getting to a point now where I'll believe it when it happens, but you know, it seemed like it could be a good card to stack with all the other one if it ever comes out. Hoping United has some award discounts on Lufthansa flights. Daniel, I don't know if you, it, the, I'm not sure if you mean by just when they go dynamic, uh, but I think typically it's what 70,000 one way in business class on partners for Lufthansa. If you're looking for Lufthansa though, I think a couple other opportunities will want to be look at Avianca. That'd be only 63,000 miles one way. Um, I believe the fuel star charges are passed on ANA as well, but it's 88,000 miles round trip on ANA for Star Alliance. So that's a good opportunity for you there. So 88,000 compared to just 70,000. But if you're looking to save money on fuel surcharges for sure, Avianca Life Miles, 63,000 miles, one-way business class life miles over to Europe. What's up, Dolly? How you doing tonight? Let's see. Oh, let me move this out of the way. Um, let's see. Got to know. How are you maneuvering around the recent Marriott changes? Do you value them? How do I value them with the recent changes? Champ, I think that's a great question. So with the, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about peak off peak. So I'm waiting to kind of see where the dust settles on this before I really have a true opinion on it, because I have a feeling we're going to see more peak pricing, which what that would potentially mean then is that a lot of people's free weekend night certificate is going to be, you're going to be able to use like for like a peak category from the category below. So I think it's what they're, we're going to kind of see. Um, I'm curious though when it all, all of us settles, but I don't really trust Marriott right now. I mean, they're just, they just can't seem to get it together. They just keep shooting themselves in the foot and crapping on themselves. Um, and you know, I burned all my Marriott points and until they kind of get it together, I'm kind of steering clear. You know, Hilton's been really good to me as far as with their, the Aspire card. And every time I go to a Hilton, I'm treated really well. And you know, Hyatt's better as far as a true value and Hyatt has been great. I think they're kind of I, I know they've gotten some publicity recently, but they're doing a great job adding these like boutique hotels to their to their portfolio. Um, I was looking at places just all over the place. I mean, I'm actually looking at Amsterdam and Brussels, for example. Amsterdam has one. It's I mean, it's thirty thousand points a night, but it's a thousand euro room per night, and it's a small luxury hotel collection. So, like, if I wanted to burn that, I could. I'm actually looking at Airbnb, but like. If you're looking to do that, it, they're just adding so much more value and really expanding that footprint internationally, which has been like a big complaint. Um, yes, Dolly, thank you very much. If you're liking the stream, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help the channel out, brings more people in. You know, uh, the channel the channel is growing. I'm really excited to see it grow. And I do appreciate all of you coming in to watch the live, asking your questions. Um, because I am super excited that you're all here. And, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, let's see what's up Dolly. I'm too much thing. I thought the, the Jack, so Jackson, no, that, that thing wasn't already ruled. So they, so in order you have to be an authorized user to transfer to someone else's account, but the 90 day rule isn't in place until tomorrow. So, you know, um, I think a good, like if you were, if your wife wasn't an example, or your spouse wasn't an, uh, an authorized user, you definitely would not be able to transfer them out. You'd have transferred to your account. But I remember you put beforehand that British Airways was one you're looking at. The kind of the roundabout way for you to circumvent just British Airways, you would transfer them to your account and then you could pull them with your wife's account or your spouse's account. Sorry. Um, so you could do it that way. Um, anyone else, though? I mean, like Delta, if you're transferring to Delta, if Aeroplan has a good transfer bonus, ANA, you know, we see Etihad, anything along those lines, any other program maybe can't pull would be really difficult to do that. So, yeah, you, you still have time just tonight. I mean, you have two hours and what, 45 minutes before it goes live, I think, and unless their system changes it later in the day. D. Anderson, I'm in Virginia Beach. You have a lot of opportunity there, I mean, uh, over there. So, uh, D. Anderson, so definitely take a look, man. You have lots of good stuff. 
Let's see, uh, living the Living Atlas. So when are you going to review the U.S. Bank co-branded airline credit cards? Are you talking about the Korean airline credit cards, Living Atlas? Sorry, I needed to get a drink. Um, I could definitely review those. I'll throw that on my list. I was like reviewing those obscure cards that nobody else does because, you know, those are important ones. I I just I just ended up re I just reviewed a smaller credit card. I just sent the video out to be edited. I should be getting that back here in the next couple of days. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, I have a list of cards. I did ask a question in the community as well as in my Facebook group, asking people some of these smaller credit cards. Because I think, you know, we, a lot of us, even myself, we always review the big cards, the gold card, the platinum card, uh, the Chase Sapphire Reserve Preferred. That, that's what draws people in. But, like, I know people don't necessarily always worry about the smaller cards. But, like, as you start progressing in the mid to late game, more so the late game, kind of finding these smaller beneficial cards that could give you value down the road. I, one thing I always tell people is while you're getting into the game, you look for the big bonuses that draws you in, but as is, you can really see banks tightening, you want to look beyond those bonuses to really get yourself cards that are going to last you long term for great earning rates. Because if you just sign up for cards with bonuses and then you're you're stuck with these crappy cards earning one point per dollar or maybe a program that you don't necessarily use all the time, it's great for the bonus. But you know if you're hoarding points, that's never going to be a good thing. And at the, eventually, you're going to run out of points and you're going to be earning at a really low rate. So um, you know, you definitely want to look at those. Let's see. What's up, Corey? How you doing, man? Let's see. Champ, uh, on the topic of hotels, do you spend the Hyatt or the Surpass with the gold pin at 15,000 second free night? Is it worth making an everything else card over the Chase Raymond Limited? Champ, that is an absolutely great question. So if I had either one, I think I would sit down and look at the hotels I'd be looking to stay at. Of the two... <laughs> Both offer quite can offer different amounts of value. Reason being, Hyatt, you get a second category one through four, which I know some people will be like, well, you want to use the Chase Freedom Unlimited because you get that 1.5 points per dollar minimum, 2.25% when you stack it with your reserve. But if you look at the spending, I, I've always thought that the way we calculate cent per point is always pretty interesting to me. One interesting way I used to think that you should calculate this was the spending you put on a card compared to compared to how much your redemption is. So for example, you spend $15,000 on that card, you get a category four hotel at a Hyatt. If that room would cost you $500 a night, you're basically getting a 33% return on your money. I'm sorry, um, not 33%, 3.3% return on your money, which is great, which is a great value. So I would tend to look at it that way. If you're someone who stays at Hyatt's a lot and ha can get good value out of those categories four, Absolutely. I think it's worth the same thing with the surpass. The surpass is weekend. I mean, but I recently, I mean, I, th I did post the video. I stayed at the Conrad in Midtown, New York, 95,000 points a night. That is, I mean, the room was going for quite a bit of money. So that gave me even more value because it's not a, it's not limited to a category. It's limited to the weekend. So if you're someone who stays there and you're and you're, you're consistent with those programs, absolutely, I would go for it. I think that is worth making an everything else card if you stay there. If you're if you don't really have loyalty to one of those programs, I, I would probably stick with the Freedom Unlimited because it gives you more flexibility. Or if you're someone who's looking more for airline miles, but if you stay at like I, I I do I will definitely say if you're someone who stays at Hyatt or Hilton's, you can earn not only a lot of points. I mean, think of it in the sense of 15,000 Hyatt points you would earn at one point per dollar plus the extra free night certificate. You have almost enough points essentially there for two category, uh, you have enough points for two category four nights. So you'd be able to extend that out for two nights instead of just one. So there's a lot of value there in those. So I definitely think it's worth it depending on the situation. All right. Charles says, what's up with Barclays? Why it's so hard to get a hold of customer service in the U.S.? I don't know what's going on with Barclays. You know, I, I haven't had too many issues with them. I know that some people have. You know, I definitely have had to reach out to them a few times. Their secure messaging system, I think, frankly, sucks. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure why there's been so many issues with some of these banks um, in general. Let's see, D. Anderson, I have the Delta, I have the American Express Gold Delta added Hilton as well. I have two U.S. bank credit cards, Cash Plus, Flex Perks, trying to stay, trying to get a stay at trying to be good to stay in the garden till March. Are you trying to stay? Uh, you're just trying to, let's see. Um, I have two people trying to stay good to stay in the garden. So as you're saying, yep. Um, I'm assuming you're saying, say under 524. 
um, <laughs> to Anderson. But yeah, I, you know, if you're over 524, it's a long time to wait. But if you're if you have enough points to travel on, it might not be worth it to hold off. Uh, but there's a lot of good cards out there. You know, I typically, I, I personally think that once you move beyond 524, depending on the time frame, I mean, think if I think of March, for example, that's what, that's what are we in August, well, seven months away, give or take. That's a long time to wait. I mean, there's some really good bonuses out there. I personally would have said screw it to Chase and moved on. But I understand some people really like it. They want to hold off. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But you could potentially keep um, foregoing some good bonuses. And if you, what I would tell people is if you don't really know a good program that you can maybe use, sit down, get, grab a, grab a nice cup of coffee, you know, whatever your favorite drink is and, and learn some new travel award programs. Let's see. Dolly says, hi, it keeps shooting themselves in the foot and keeps crapping themselves. I'm dead. Um, oh, you mean Marriott? Yeah. You know, Mar it's so true. It, it's Marriott just can't seem to get out of their way. It, it's, it's really hard. I, I actually now view Marriott more as airline miles as opposed to a good hotel program. You know, there's just so many issues going on consistently with them. I mean, I was seeing one thing, I was reading some, it was one of the forums, someone was charged, like it's a known issue, but if you're not paying attention, they got charged for like adding a kid to a reservation. It was like $2,000 on their bill. They didn't, if they weren't paying attention, they'd just be billed for it. So like, it's ridiculous how bad Marriott has taken the SPG program and just taken it right into the ground. Um, hopefully they recover. You know, I think they kind of think they're too big to, to not screw up or to fail, but you know, definitely with Hilton is coming on strong. They've been fantastic. Um, I think a lot of people are eventually going to jump over if they haven't, if they keep having this issue, potentially jump over to Hyatt or Hilton. Um, you can't really blame it. I mean, think of just the credit cards in general. I can buy diamond status. I get breakfast. I get upgrades. I get better IT. I get a better customer service experience. Or I can spend four fifty on a Marriott card, not get breakfast. I can spend my way up to platinum to potentially earn breakfast. So um, let's see. Show that one. So there's a lot of like a lot of issues in, in, in general with them. So all right, let's see. Oh man, uh, let's see. So YouTube changed the live uh, the live setup. So it's it's I have my comments off to the side and it keeps going down to the bottom. So let's take a look real fast. So, so another another is Chase Hotels adding close to 40 all inclusives in the portfolio soon in Mexico, Caribbean. This might be a viable option to use membership reward points down the road for, for a solid redemption. CJ, I think for a hotels, Choice Hotels is actually an undervalued program for membership rewards. Not an all now I wouldn't use them all the time, but Choice Hotels, especially over in Europe, have some really solid value. And depending on how their program prices these out, I agree. You know, I think you need to look at it as a whole. I think it people kind of like poo poo on the idea of using membership rewards for hotels. But if you can get a really good value from it, value is value. I don't care how you get it. If you're going to redeem it, we'll say even 1.8 cents per point for an all inclusive, not pay for any food, enjoy the beach. That's a good value. So, you know, I agree. I'm curious to see what happens with them. That also comes in the idea too, that with the choice co-branded credit card with Barclay, I think we consistently see that one go to like 32, 32 or 40,000 points for a relatively low spend. I think it's like a $1,000 spend. So I would keep an eye on that if that's what you're looking to do as well, because that could be a good opportunity in general. Let's see. Icarus, I just got the new 3% choose your category card, bringing my total number of cards to 30 something. That's pretty awesome, Icarus. You know, I think, I think you're thinking uh, Bank of America, right? Uh, you know, I have that one as well. I typically leave that one to online purchases because it's pretty awesome. Um, 30 something, I think my total cards I've had, I have to go through, I think active right now I have 27 for myself, but I'm probably in the 50 to 60, I think range, high forties to 60 range for total cards. Um, cause I was pretty active at one point a couple of years ago, including opening six cards, six cards or eight cards after a, a appendectomy. So earned a boatload of points a little bit easier back then to get cards than they are today. Let's see. S. Duh, let's see. Where did that go? <laughs> if I use my membership reward points is in canceling the gold card on the 13th month, do I still get a $250 refund by check? So, S. Duh, if you do cancel, if you do cancel the card after on the 13th month after the it posts your account, you will get a refund back to yourself. They cancel. They they'll refund you the money to that. Um, that won't be a problem. But it has to be within 30 days though of the annual fee posting. 
Um, let's see, Living Atlas and Aero Mexico too. Yes, I could definitely take a look at those cards. I think the Aero Mexico, especially for the round the world opportunity, is uh, more of an undervalued look at. Uh, can offer a lot of value. I think we we all look at A and A, but if you can piece together the Aero Mexico around the world, it's really good opportunity for you. I could definitely look at Korean as well because it's hard to earn those Korean airline miles now with them not being a part of Chase anymore. And I mean, you can get them through Marriott, uh, but that at a three to one. But I'll add those to my list, the Living Atlas. Don't you worry, um, and I'll take a look at those. Let's see, Nida. Hi, following following you recently. I have a question. I have the Sapphire Prefer, but everyone thinks the Reserve is better. I have doubts. Is that and because of the four hundred fifty dollar fee, and about and doubts about that because of the I'm already at five twenty four. So I think that's a common concern, uh, Nida, for people. And one thing I would at throw in there is. Do you have other, do you want the benefits such as lounge access, um, you know, better travel protections? Do you spend money? On, I'm assuming you spend money on travel anyways. So if you spend money on travel and dining anyways, you're earning extra points per dollar. It gets you an additional multiplier at 1.5 cents per point to the Chase Travel Portal as opposed to that 1.25 cents per point. You have that $300 travel credit. So the way I typically look at things is like you're spending $450, but you're just shifting money. Like, you're giving Chase three hundred dollars. You're giving Chase getting four hundred fifty dollars. As long as you spend money on travel, which is pretty easy to do. I mean, theirs is pretty broad. They give you your money back, which is really nice. Um, you don't have any like crazy stupid re restrictions like American Express, where they basically make need to be, like, you know, have to sit. In, I feel like American Express, you just sit in, like, you just got to keep jumping through hoops for it. But Chase makes it so easy. So if you do that, I would run the numbers. But just the lounge benefit alone, you know, I've gotten really good value out of the lounge benefit. Makes some of these layovers really nice. You get better travel protection, such as uh, trip to lake exempt for six hours instead of 12 hours. You get a higher limit on prime on auto rental coverage. So while it is more money, effectively, if you spend money on travel to begin with, it's only a $55 difference. And you get better earning rates. You get better redemptions through the portal. If you're someone who explicitly uses the transfer portal only to transfer to partners, I would still think if you spend money on travel and dining, you're probably going to get a better value with the reserve. Definitely run the numbers though, because maybe the extra $55 isn't worth it to you. But if you have the Chase Trifecta or Quadfecta, you might be getting better value with the reserve over the preferred to begin with. Um, and I, I have a hard time, you know, I, I actually consider the preferred more of an overvalued card um, in the long term of the game, just because double points on travel and dining really don't do it anymore. Uh, when you look at other cards, I mean, even the city premier, I know it's going to be losing travel protection soon. Is triple points on travel, including gas, and still has double points on dining. So, a lot of points out there. Uh, membership rewards. I mean, you have the Blue Business Plus. It's double points everywhere. I, I think you have the Venture Card. Double miles everywhere. So, I would take a look at those and compare that numbers for yourself. Let's see. Hey, Chris. Speaking of three percent cards, I have I've have trouble getting Bank of America three percent. They reject me for not having a banking relationship with them. It's hard to get with it, but it's hard with all their fee waiver program. Yeah. I was reading somewhere a while back that it's like a you need to put like fifteen hundred dollars in either a checking or a CD or something with them um, in order to get them to, to let you in. I mean, I have had a, I have two credit cards with them, and I still can't get another credit card with them. So, you know, I, I I might throw money in their account to begin with just because I think it would be nice. There's a couple cards I'd like from them, uh, so I might have to just throw some money in a Bank of America account to to make it happen. What's up, Shamrock? How you doing, ma'am? Robert? No, all right. Robert is nice. Let's see. Daniel R. says, American Airlines seems to have changed the rules for getting a bonus for their credit cards before open one card. Let's say Platinum Select. Couldn't get the bonus if you open any other American Airlines cards. Yep. So what they did, Daniel, is they basically changed it from a blanket, um, was it 24 months? So like if you open the Platinum Select, you would have to wait to eat 24 months after you opened or closed a different American Airlines card to get it back. What they've now done is basically restrict it to every 48 months for that particular card. So you open, we'll say the Platinum Select. You can't get that bonus again for 48 months, but you could get the executive bonus. You could get the gold bonus. You could get the mile up bonus. And if you if you played it right, what you could do is basically open one card a year and it just recycles itself. So I wouldn't be shocked. My gut says we're going to eventually see this type of thing go with the thank you points. Because I think there it it would just make sense, and it kind of locks people out because there's only really three cards to get there as opposed to four. But they definitely did, they changed that a little while ago, and I'm curious to see. I haven't seen any information. Let me know in the comments 
if the flyers are still going out with the language to bypass it, I think we saw some, I thought we saw those dry up, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if you if you received them. AMX gold or blue, AMX blue. I'm, I'm assuming the blue business plus what you're talking about, 800 square score. Um, I think that is possibly one of the best combinations of credit cards. And the way I would look, and if, if you're looking at just one or the other, what I would look at is how much money are you spending on dining? How much money are you spending on groceries? If you're not spending a lot there, but you spend a lot of money on, we'll say everything else, it's the Blue Business Plus is great. The other thing to consider is how much are you spending on those the grocery and the dining categories, as well as are you how much benefit are you getting from the, the credits? The $120 dining credit is sliced up in like in a stupid allowance, like you're a four-year-old to get, you know, you have to like beg for it. The airline credit's now harder to use. Like, so I don't, I don't believe now, unless you were already spending the money on seat upgrades, checking bags, buying food at whatever it is on the airline, it's really not worth hundred dollars anymore to you because you can't liquidate it in the form of gift cards. So if you're not spending enough, if you're not getting FA out of the credits, it's gonna keep your annual fee higher to begin with. I would run the amount of points you get to the value you would get, subtract the credits out, compare that to the no fee blue business plus card. To see what the value is there, um, but long answer, they're great together. Um, short answer, I mean, but I think it just depends on how much money you're spending in each of those categories. If you're looking for simple, I don't know, Blue Business Plus, you can transfer to mem you can transfer to partners, double points everywhere. It's a pretty fantastic card. Uh, if you're someone who spends a ton of money on dining and groceries, it, you got. I think you would go with the gold. All right, let's see. Now you can see we can get one bonus if you've opened one with any account recently. I th Daniel, I think this is going back to your your American Airlines, right? Yeah, but I think I got to that one there. Let's see. FICO Garden. Ah, okay. I see what you're saying, champ. All right. Let's see. Uh, thanks, bro. Good evening, Janelle. How are you doing tonight? Dan Anderson. Yes, I'm over 524 until 8, uh, August of 21. Too many good products. Oh, man. YouTube, stop doing that. Let's see. Too many good products. Uh, Navy Federal Credit Union flagship is next to add. I have two cards. Love Navy Federal Credit Union. Those put me over 524. You know what? The Navy Federal Credit Union flagship rewards, if you're eligible to get in with them, it is actually, I think it's actually a pretty solid card. Big bonus. If you're someone who liked the Arrival Plus or even like the Capital One Venture card before they added transfer partners, I actually think the Navy Federal Credit Union card is better than those because it has slightly better earning rates on travel. You can still use the eraser function, uh, but their eraser function is 12 months. It gives you a 12 month time frame as opposed to 90 or 120 days. Undervalued card, I think, if you can get it, uh, but it's only limited to military personnel and a couple other, uh, other groups. So definitely worth looking at it. Let's see, David, uh, AMX King Moss, I'm sticking with Marriott. Hey, if Marriott works for you, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If it works for you, it works for you. And that's, uh, as long as you're getting value, that's all that really matters. And there's nothing, and there's nothing uh, wrong with that thing. How's everyone doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing tonight? Let's see. CEO Little S3 um, is the move to get a hotel card, Bonvoy, uh, i.e. the Bonvoy card to get a sign-up bonus. Then use the Chase SR to book for 3X. Oh, Sapphire Reserve to book for 3X. Thank you for your video. So the way I would typically look at this as uh, CEO is to get the cha the ultra reward set up first because that, that's going to give you far more benefit down the road than some of these just a quick sign-up bonus. You get the Bond Boy card for the sign-up bonus and basically let it sit there. Uh, what some people will do, though, and what they've been doing is I think the loophole, I think it's still allowed, is that they're upgrading this to possibly to the Ritz-Carlton credit card. And the reason why they're doing that is because it gets them access to that Visa Infinite airline portal, which gives you $100 off two, two to five round trip domestic coach tickets. So a lot of people are kind of circumventing that because you can no longer apply for that card. But yeah, you basically want to get the Bonvoy card for the bonus and then the chat Sapphire Reserve are preferred for that 3X and the ability to transfer out to transfer partners as well as redeem for 1.5 cents per point through the travel portal. Um, how many people are in here right now? So there's 51 people. If you're in here, consider giving it a thumbs up. You know, it does help the channel out, bring more people in. Um, keep those questions coming. I, I want to keep answering questions. This is what I love doing this stuff. So let's see. 
Thoughts? Uh, let's see. Thoughts on the founder card? You know, Calvin, I think the founder's card is actually could be good for certain people. Um, I, I think if you're someone who travels to Vegas pretty regularly, it could be good. I know they have like the American Airlines status match or status challenge. So if you're someone doing that, you know, I don't believe in chasing status just to chase status. But if you fly them enough, it could be worth it. My issue with Hilton is that everyone getting diamond status from a credit card that is hard. It's hard to get upgrade in popular destinations. You know, Shamrock, I don't necessarily disagree because when everyone has status, nobody has status, right? I can just say from personal experience, I haven't had that personally happen to me uh, in traveling to a handful of destinations, including, you know, New York. Um, but it definitely, yeah, so, especially if you're going during peak time and everyone has diamond status, everyone's getting the room upgrade and you're kind of stuck with your your standard room uh, as a whole. So, um, you know, that it is what I remember when. I remember when Hyatt a few years ago status matched so many people to Hyatt Diamond status. I got in on that with IHG Platinum status. It was pretty great. But I know a lot of people were upset about that because when everyone has something, nobody has. Just like TSA free check. I mean, it's so easy to get it now. Like, is not can you really consider it like a true benefit anymore? Like, not everyone's willing to spend the money on the the Aspire card for Diamond. But if you're someone who's in this in the travel game you know it's a good card and it's worth its weight and it worth its annual fee. Let's see. Shamrock Mar Marriott does a decent, decent one. Once you get real status outside of the freebie gold from the platinum card, I, you know, if you're someone who has platinum or whatever titanium crap level, they call it now, I don't know if I remember all the levels, um, you know, it can get pretty good for you, but you really have to work hard for it. It's not, they pretty much reward like people who truly stay with them uh, long-term, but I have heard, I've been reading stuff from people too, who stay with them a lot that they're kind of getting fed up and upset with it. So it's, you know, it's hit or miss, you know, you, every program has their pros and cons um, as a whole. Let's see. Shamrock knows what he, let's see. Shamrock knows what talking about. I think so. I would agree with that. Let's see. Every, everyone doing anything for Labor Day weekend. Um, I don't know what we're doing. We're supposed to go, we were going to go hike Mount Katahdin, but um, we didn't get a parking pass because that filled up pretty quickly. So we're going to find something else to do. Um, I'm going to take wife, uh, my, my wife and I are going to take the little guy out. We're going to do something. We don't know yet, but we're definitely going to get out of the house and go do something here. All right. <laughs> Everyone needs, let's see. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Uh, greetings from Osaka. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to skip those political comments. That's not really, you know, I'm, I'm not about the political stuff. So, um, but I appreciate you stopping by. Let's see. Uh, the main, let's see, CJ. The main thing I want to see Marriott do is improve their Cobra and a brilliant credit card to give you higher status in gold. They're just not competitive with Holden. I, CJ, I agree as far as what a competitive, like as far as what the card offers, it doesn't really hold, doesn't hold weight to the Aspire card. Um, I'd like, I'd actually, if if they're not going to increase the status, because I can understand wanting to reserve it for true platinum or titanium members is at least increase the multipliers because the multipliers I don't think are really worth spending anything on. They're really no different. You get then like some of like, you still get the double points on non bonus. You get six X still six X at the, um, I think it's still six X at hotel spend. So like there's really no added benefit. You get that 50,000 point certificate lounge access, but you can get that with so many other cards. The lounge access is no longer for priority force pass. Plus the American express. You don't even get priority pass, um, lounge at restaurant anymore. I am holding out though that Lounge Buddy partnership they just bought out or bought out Lounge Buddy is going to come around well for American Express card holders. So we're kind of like down on the fact that they they entered that the restaurants. My hope is that we're going to see something big come from Lounge Buddy. We see that right now with Resi, right? Like American Express is challenging open table with Resi to where you earn points. So it, I think they're having something up their sleeve with it. We, it's going to just drop on us. I'm hoping. I'm hoping so. Uh, Chase sucks. I, I don't know if they suck. You know, I, th I think they're pretty, they're, you know, I posted in the, the, um, I posted in the community tab, like people's, if you can only earn one point currency, actually, let me know down in the comments. If you can only earn one point currency, what point currency you're going to earn? Like for, you know, ultra rewards, membership rewards, thank you points or cash back. You know, I think what David, I think what people like about Chase is that they're just easy. They're easy. I think if, once you get deeper, once you get deeper into the game, Membership rewards and city thank you points are really, I think, better in sense of transfer partners because the list is just so big. But, you know, if you're starting off, you know, 524 to support each of Chase cards in order, and they're just easy. You know, I if people just want simplistic, it's a pretty simple way to get decent value. 
let's see, Charles Wheat, if Janelle, if you ever come to uh, uh, California, they have a thing called International Street Fair, five different countries. That sounds awesome, Charles. If I'm ever out that way to California, I will definitely need to stop by that. I love street food. I love trying all sorts of different stuff. Now, let's see, Icarus, BBV or BBVA, Compass, Clear Points. I was turned down. Okay. Um, I'll have to review that card as well. I know I know BBVA had a couple different cards that was pretty interesting. I'll have to take a look at that. Uh, South Dakota, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do I use the Cash App? If so, what do you think about Coffee Boost lock policy? Do you think they're going to do? You know, Esther, I actually don't use the Cash App. I've had no interest in using it. Um, I know there's some decent benefits to it, but like living up in Bangor, we have very few anything. So I haven't really looked into it just because I get, I think, good review, good value out of my credit cards. Uh, but I'll need to look into that as a whole. Let's see. Uh, Shamrock Chase is overrated. Still amazing how folks will stop their hobby to qualify at Meteor Cards. You know, I definitely can agree with the fact that once you get out of 524, it's not worth holding on to. But I think it's like, I, I always kind of feel like Chase was the like the drug that got you hooked. That, you know, you you get a Chase card, you make your simple redemption either through the portal or you transfer like to Southwest or United because they're just simple. And then you're hooked. And then it just depends on how deep you want to get into it. But I would definitely not be stopping. I mean, I'm over 524. I think I, I'm over 524 and I just keep applying for cards. You know, I actually, I think, you know, we got the Avianca cards recently. I need to burn those points because the CEO said they're bankrupt, but I'll burn those points soon enough. But that's definitely what's on my list of things to do. Uh, but they're just like, the, they're just a drug to get you hooked. I mean, they're, they're, they're like a little cocaine to, to get you hooked on the game. Charles Wheat, let's see. Uh, you'll have to make a trip to California, but there's so much to do here. Um, Blue Business Louie. What's going on, Louise? How you doing? Hey, Blue Business Plus Plus Ebates combo. Man, I am loving that Ebates portal. It, it is That has been a great thing. I think I have like the next payout. I should have like 75,000 membership reward points coming my way. Like it's pretty fantastic. So I am pretty pretty excited for the portal. I think that is honestly one of the more underrated portals. Like it gets some more of my business now than other the other one I would use was Top Cash Back, but now I can say that Ebates gets like the first go because it is just so awesome to earn membership award points at some really good rates as well. Let's see, James. Hey Waller, um, great to see you. Great to see you too, James. Thanks for stopping by. What are your thoughts on Life Miles points in general? Are they worth transferring to? Thank you. So I do think Life Miles are beneficial. I think you their website is a little bit buggy. Fun fact: I was actually last night shooting an award booking demonstration video and life miles is part of the program within an hour of me redoing my research to go to shoot it. The, the award availability changed and I was a little upset about that cause I got to go back and reshoot it, but that's okay. But there is a lot of value there. Um, you know, depending on what you want to do in the U S they have different zones. I know they don't have it anymore per se, but like you can fly in the same zone for 7,500 miles one way you can fly zone two to 10,000 miles and 12,500 miles one way. You know, 63,000 miles business class over to Europe. If you're an Avianca medal, I was finding flights from the U.S. to Central America, the Caribbean, for like 14,000 miles. They're definitely good and they have a place. But with all their financial issues right now, I would definitely make sure you have a use for them before I would transfer my points out. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Man, I hate when the, the, uh, YouTube does that. Let's see. Um, Reckless freaking yo, I love your content. I screwed up. I screwed up and got the Hilton surpass the day the offer ended. I got blinded by the free night reward. So, um, oh man, so you got so you missed out on the free night. Is that what it is, Reckless? Because like that would that would be really rough. But um, the day the offer ended, yeah, that that hurts. That definitely hurts. I think the one thing you might have going for you while you may have missed out is in a year you'll probably get an upgrade offer to the to the Aspire. So that is always unfortunate when you have that funny story. Um, when I, a couple years back, American Airlines had this uh, 100,000 point American Airlines executive card. It was 100,000 points, had a $10,000 spend. This is when I was trying to like, I was really pushing to earn that bonus because I actually use those points to fly business class home on Hawaiian Airlines. We could fly back to the mainland. And we actually made a, re, a, re, a return. I hit the bonus. I was like $3 over the $10,000 limit. Hit it. I was super pumped. Statement closes. And 
I don't have my points. So I actually called, I reached out to him like, what's up with this? And they're like, well, you made a return. You're like $13 short. And like, because of the time, I think it was, it wasn't a 90 day window. Exactly. It was like 97 days or something. They're like, you still have like three days to meet this requirement. So I like go out and I buy like a $200 Amazon gift card. But like, I totally get that. Like missing out on points or potentially missing out. Definitely get your heart racing and definitely hurts. Um, Charles, I'm assuming you're saying why does Chase suck? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Reckless, I was almost out of 504, now waiting another five months. Yeah, man, there's too many good cards. You know, I think that's what Chase wants. Chase wants people who are loyal to them, and that's cool. Let people be cha loyal to Chase. Like, if you're slow and patient with this, you know, it's a good opportunity. But if you're someone who's really just looking to, you know, up your game and really get the, the value out of your points, there's other opportunities out there. Um, and then once you get your chase rotation, get a couple hotel cards. I think, I think they off, I think hotel cards actually offer more value than hotel uh, airline cards. There's a few things I think airlines could do to become more valuable, but as a whole, you're gonna get more value, I think from hotel cards and then move on. I mean, you get your, you get your ultimate reward rotation set up. You get the Hyatt card, maybe the 120,000 point IHG card. Um, and you, and you, or 125,000 and then you go and you, you move on to American Express or city and you find just cards that work. And I think what people are, they're kind of, they're kind of afraid to jump from chase because like chase is just, like I said, it's easy for people. I can just redeem through cash, but like American Express takes work. You know, I saw, was it the video with Trippa Stewart and Sebi about like explaining membership rewards and, and Sebi is so right. It just takes work. And if you're not willing to put in the work to learn it, that's fine. Just know like, like, I think this is coming up in a video I shot, but like you can get good value by learning these couple partners, but you can get great value by digging deeper and learning the Alliance partners. And if you're not willing to dig, dig in, that's totally cool. Just know like you're never going to get truly great value, but you're just going to get good value. There's nothing wrong with that. It just depends on how much time and effort you want to put into this game. <laughs> let's see. Um, happy Labor Day. Okay, let's see. I'm assuming work. Thank you, Vic. Yeah, give, get, if you don't mind, give the video a thumbs up. There's 56 of you in there. Thank you, Vic, for saying that. I appreciate that. Um, it's great seeing all of you here, James. Janelle, how to get a great 800, 800, 800 score. I am pretty pretty pumped to have all of you in here, especially 57 of you. Um, when I remember when I first started doing live streams, I, I was like super pumped to have like four people watching me, and I think one was like my cat. So like it means a lot to have you guys in here like listening and asking questions. Like it's a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Can City not bluff the prestige tomorrow? Can not, not buff. I, you know what? It, I think it's going to happen. My my interesting thing, I have this thing because if, if you can book it online, I'm curious how they give the upfront benefit. City's IT has never been fantastic. So if you were to try it as of you know tomorrow to try the more than two nights, how is it going to hold up? Um, but I think it, it's going to happen. You know, they're they're definitely coming for it. I think City. You know, city goes like one, two, one step forward and like six steps back. Like they can never decide. They're like, yeah, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna take on Chase and American Express. And they're like, wait, you know what? That's too much work. Let's just let's just dip out and let's just let's, let's take a step back. This is not, you know, what? We're gonna grab. We're gonna actually just pay attention to Wendy's or uh, you know Chick Fil A and Popeyes and just take a step and like listen to them argue about which chicken sandwich is better. Because I'm not into this. Um, one thing I think find interesting, and I have this gut feeling, I don't know why, but the rumor of the city double cash offering, potentially transferring points to uh, thank you points. I think if they do that and they just scrapped all the benefits, what I think they're actually banking on is that people are going to overlook the lack of benefits for the earning rates. And the reason why I say that is think of someone who has like the platinum card and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. The, the, the argument always comes down. Do I want to use my platinum card at 5X or my reserve at 3X and get travel protections? And some people are like, nah, man, we're going to get that 5X. It's great. So people are willing to forego certain benefits for better earning rates. It's just the way we see it, right? You know, as, as a whole. So I wonder if City is banking on the fact they're going to strip all these benefits. But you know, you're going to keep that prestige because you're earning five points per dollar in restaurants. You're earning five points per dollar on airfare. You know, you're getting still the travel credits. So I wonder if they're kind of banking on the fact people are going to be going, you know what? I don't really care so much about the protections because the earning rates are so strong. That is something I think they're going to play hard on if it, if it's is true. So this is a to be continued conversation on that one, but that's my gut feeling they're kind of banking on. 
Um, let's see. Hello, Mr. Chocol Chocolazo. How you doing? Uh, Kmart key. If some, if over five twenty, is there another way? Is there no other way to get a chase ink? There is. There are two ways. If you are over five twenty four, how to get any sort of chase card? One pre approval and branch. You need to walk into a branch see if you're pre approved. Two is the just for you offers in the on the website or in the mobile app. I saw in my Facebook group someone actually posted up on. Um, they posted an email they got. If you get an email from Chase, that's just marketing material that does not bypass the five twenty four rule. In branch offers, just for you offers in the website or mobile app. That's it. Um, so those are the two ways. Team Hilton. Team Hilton is fantastic. What's up, Travel Click Explorer? How you doing, David? Great to see you stop by. Man, I see what you always have the issues. Like it jumps down. I don't know if you've seen this. Like it jumps down um, over like when you're taking comments. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Like I keep losing my spot. Let's see. Um, let's see. What's better, the gold or the everyday preferred? Charles, that's a great, you know, and it comes down to where you spend. If you are a big spender on groceries you know, or you like to dine out a lot, the gold might be better. But I think the everyday preferred is like an undervalued card. You know, if you're going to be consistent on one card, four and a half points per dollar on groceries, triple points on gas, one and a half points everywhere else. If you're looking for a super simple, easy rotation for our membership board points, everyday preferred is great. I think it just comes down to what your spending is. But like for myself, out of those two, you know, I'd probably get more benefit personally from the everyday preferred. But, you know, I know there's a lot of you in big cities and who can utilize those credits and the benefits of it that the gold card's it. Um, but no, I think those are two great cards. I'm actually working on a ranking membership reward video. And uh, that I've had a hard time placing both of those because like, you know, they're both really good cards. Charles, we I agree with you, the gas category. Let's see. AMX guy. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, on your home. Oh, thank you very much, Aunt. I just moved my office down here not too long ago, so um, I can actually like I, I can show you guys the map. So I like my map over here. My wife painted that for me. It's made out of coffee, so it kind of sticks in the back. So I'm pretty excited about having it there because, like, you know, we like to travel, so it's just nice to have a travel map. So let's see. My best to your family. Keep up the great info. Thank you, Ivan. I appreciate the support, man. I really do. Uh, let's see. Ant says, if I'm so if I'm starting out with credit cards, do you recommend getting at least four of the Chase cards and one military card? So, and if you are, I'm assuming in the military, have a military tie, if you're active duty, Chase will actually waive the, the annual fees on their card. So I would definitely say if you're getting into the game, I would start with Chase. If you're eligible for business cards, I would get the ink cards because when they don't count towards your 524, they have big bonuses and great earning rates. Then I would get cards to fill in the gaps from there, such as like I think the Chase Freedom card is good. The Chase, the, if you're if you're in the military, get the Sapphire Reserve. I'd get those cards first. I would wait a minimum of 30 days between applications. I know technically you can do two for 30, but the way Chase has been going, I would not do that. I would, I would play it more safe, one every 30, 60, or 90 days. And then after you get beyond that, the military card, such as like what a USAA card or something like that, like those are decent. But I would I would I would round out your Chase rotation first. Get some American Express cards, maybe some city cards, and go from there. Further down the line, when you're in the late game, then I would look to get one of the, the military bank cards. Let's see. Um, the reason people that live here and love it here, like Maine, because of weather, like 72 and sunny, the average. I don't know. I, I don't think it's average of 72 degrees here in Maine. Um, in the wintertime, you know, it's cold. It, the weather is here beautiful in the fall. I can't I can't argue with that. The summer here are pretty, pretty good. I think today was like 74. It was great. It was sunny. Although the bugs have been really bad this year. Mosquitoes eat me alive outside. Uh, let's see. Vic says, okay, Vic, yep, there we go. What do you think is better? What do you think is better in getting the platinum card or a surplus of the, the surplus and the Bonvoy brilliant card? I'm thinking you're saying surpass and the Bonvoy card. If you can get the hundred thousand platinum card, Charles, I would go for that. Um, but that that's where I would wait, I would do that. I know you can get seventy five thousand points as well looking through a private browser. So it really depends on how how patient you want to be. Uh, but the surpass uh, is a great value. I think right now, you know, I think they just dropped a bonus though in the Bonvoy Brilliant card. I you know I, I would probably lean towards a surpass. I'm not a big fan of the Brilliant card for its fee, but the platinum card would be good if you can get the big bonus. Asked all things for anything. Uh, what would be your go-to membership word transfer? I love you are to Hyatt. 
transfer value. I don't think there's anything quite comparable in MR. Traveling on a budget, of course. So membership rewards have a vast, major, like vast value. I have a vast, like just have a ton of value in their transfer partners. It really depends on where you're going. For example, a while back I did uh, an award booking demonstration with like Aeroplan. If you're looking to travel domestically, Aeroplan is fantastic right now. You can visit, you can have a domestic stopover. So you can visit two cities for the price of 25,000 miles. Like for example, you can go from New York to LA to Miami back to New York for 25,000 points all in coach. You know, if you're looking to go international, you can use like we'll say to Europe, you can use a and in business class for 88,000 points round trip and you use certain partners. You can have reduced fees. Same thing with Aeroplan because you get that stopover as well. You know, TAP and what is a good option. Um, Avianca is good for business opportunities as well if you're looking. But I think overall, like, you know, even if you go to Asia, Virgin Atlantic to fly a and they have a lot of opportunities and a lot of value. Uh, but I think the ones that are going to give you the best value um, will probably be internet, like international premium cabins. But I do think the Aeroplan domestic stopover is an undervalued undervalued partner that doesn't get a lot of attention if you're traveling on a budget here in the U.S. in general. <laughs> Let's see. Rex says, I meant I did get the free night, got the deal, but I was almost, almost at a 524. I think you made the right decision, Reckless. That was too good of a deal to pass up. If I was in your spot, I would have done it too. 130,000 points, free night certificate for the weekend. That was worth, like, to me, like I said, I did the one in New York. It was 95,000 points. It's a great offer. You know, to me, that was worth it as a whole. So I think, I think it was okay. All right. Let's see, David jumping over to, everybody jump over to Travel uh, Travel Click Explore, live stream in 14 minutes. Definitely check out David's channel. He puts out some awesome content. If you aren't already over there, subscribe to his channel. David's great. You know, I, lo I love his channel. He puts out some great content. I love his live stream he's doing to come in and answer your questions. It's a pretty fantastic thing he does. I don't, he does it pretty consistently. I got to give my hats off to him because like that's a lot of time spent, you know, doing things. But like definitely check out his channel, hit that subscribe button, give him a thumbs up. Support him because he does a great job. <laughs> Let's see. Well, uh, we love you out here on the West Coast, man. Thank you, Charles. You know, I, I, I went, we, a couple years ago we went out to San Diego and San Francisco. You know, those were some fantastic destinations. I'm looking to get up to Seattle at some point and come back down. I'd love to get to LA. Um, there's a YouTube conference I want to get to out in LA, but I don't think it happened this year. Uh, but I, I plan to make my way out to the West Coast when I do. Definitely. Um, We'll try to have a meetup. I did. I had a meetup when I was in New York the other day. Pretty good turnout. Uh, of, I had like six or seven people. So really, really grateful to have some people like meet you, meet some people in in, in person and interact. Because like like I said, like I truly enjoy just making content to help people and help people travel. So like, or just even earn points or cash back. So it was really awesome. It meant a lot to have people come out and like meet up in person. Um, in, in general, so it was awesome. Does it matter what order I begin with with the credit cards? I have I also have the option to obtain military cards as well, and it it does matter in the sense of with Chase, I would go first if you can get the business cards because they don't count toward your five twenty four and big and their big bonuses. Outside of that, I'd probably start with like the reserve or, um, because of that one point five cents per point. The other option is you could go with the preferred, wait a year and upgrade to the reserve. Uh, but definitely, I would start with the ultimate reward point earning cards first. And then moved up to the hotel, co-branded credit cards, and then beyond that. Let's see, Waller. Um, at so many people making a video about the Apple Card, will I also? I did one the other week talking about good alternatives to the Apple Card. Um, you know, I think it's getting a lot of attention, but um, you know, I don't think it's I don't think it's worth it. The people who are getting it to to because of the titanium card or they're Apple fans. Like I get it if you're an Apple fan, but like you don't need to get a card to steer it out. I mean, I've, I've worked on a MacBook. You know what I mean? Like I like, I do, I've had Apple before. I mean, I don't have, that's about it. I think I have for Apple because everything else is stupid expensive for them. But um, you know, there's, there's value in it in the sense of, well, and I think there's not even really value in the Apple card. There's better alternatives. Um, I did make a video on alternatives for it. Uh, but I, I don't, it's not worth getting. I think it's, I think it's really a crap card. You know, I think it's good on app. Apple's marketing is, you know, the probably some of the best out there, but totally not worth doing whatsoever. 
Let's see, Janelle says, I'm Linden, I am Linden fiance how to on how to get in on credit score. I watch your video. I watch your video, Tim. Awesome job. Keep up the good work. Um I don't I don't know what that means. <laughs> um let's see. Let's see. Um I yeah, that drop down thing frustrating. Good to see you too, bro. Loving the live stream. Thanks. Thanks, David. Yeah, man. I I wish they could just have like an easier way of like going like when you start getting going you know a lot of comments like it just sucks that they just like flows down to the bottom and i gotta go back and work my way back up let's see Ant says um also not a worry problem no, it's not, no no worry i know it's, it's great to have super fans right david so like that's totally cool i'm not worried about that and of course you know what like i said love your content it's great i check your stuff out all the time so um and you're just so cool come cool and collect on things so it's great let's say so all spend is made out of coffee. I know it took, it took like, I think it took six, seven months for this to get done. Like it's actually like a proportional flat map. So my wife actually took string and measured out the whole, let's see, she took string and measured out the whole thing with a, with a ruler too and mathematically did it. And then went through, outlined it, and then went back in and painted it. So it was a lot of work out there for her to do it. Uh, let's see. Thank you for the information. Hope you get a chance to travel places you You've been by using points. That's the great thing and about points is once you get a handful of like once you get some points, it's it's great. Um, you know, and I you know I I don't think I have a video on it, but like our first trip internationally outside of our honeymoon in Jamaica, to Jamaica was like we went to Budapest and Budapest was outstanding. Like it was pretty, it was intimidating at first because like we didn't know the language, but like you get through it, and that's I think the struggle is something I really enjoy. And, you know, that's when I think I got bit there and like, and then I just wanted to keep going and just keep going and like, keep going. So, you know, there's so many places, you know, we've been primarily to Europe because it's like a really quick flight for us as a whole. And we've been to some really awesome places and looking to expand out into Asia next year. Um, but only, I don't, I only want to go in business class. That's a long flight um, because that's a, uh, <laughs> that's a long flight to fly and coach, which I would do it, but with a little guy now and he's got to lay across me or have his own seat. Like I'd prefer to have it in business class. If I can do that, waiting for that A and a uh, Virgin Atlantic deal. Let's see, show some love, hit that thumbs up button. Yes. Thank you so much, Ivan. If you are here, hit that thumbs up button. It draws more people into the live chat, answer more of your questions. And this is really awesome. I'm having a good time doing this. Hope you are too. Um, you know, you know, one question I have for you guys, leave it, leave it down. It's like, um, what is the one credit card on your wish list that you wish you could get? Let me know right down in the comments what your, what's on your wish list for credit cards. Let's see. Um, I was asking about the platinum card because does it give you gold status? Amounts? If so, what would be potential? Oh, I see what you're saying, Charles. I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Uh, because it gives you gold status, Marriott. So would it be beneficial to keep the platinum first? If you are, if you want to, if you're not going to spend money on the surpass to get that free night at the fifteen thousand. And it's so value. I basically would say value that at ninety five dollars for the benefit, in the sense that it's giving you gold status for the brilliant. If you're somebody, gold status for Marriott, I think is 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 washed up now. It's basically like the old silver. You, you get like a two p.m. late checkout. You get no free breakfast. So to me, it's not worth as much as what it is. Uh, but I would definitely say, if I had to keep one and I was getting good value from the benefits and whatnot. I would definitely probably go with the platinum card over the, that combination of cards. All right. Uh, uh, CEO Little says, if not targeted for the platinum 100,000, send a bonus. Would you sign up for the 60,000, leaving 40 on the table or wait for the 100,000? Uh, little uh, CEO, what I would do is uh, I'm not targeted for 100,000 and I'm getting itchy to get the card. I'd go into a private browser and I would look up the American Express platinum card because you're going to find a 75,000 point offer. Um, you know, could you go for 60? You could. I would prefer to leave 25,000 points on the table and get it for the benefits rather than 40,000. Um, I've contemplated doing this myself, but I have plenty of points for my own travels right now. So I'm not in a rush to get it. I know I'll get it. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm waiting, but if I was wanting it right now, I'd go, I'd go private browser, 75,000 points for a $5,000 spend. That's what I would do. All right. Um, let's see. It would be cool to meet up in the, uh, in the OC. We can get some coffee and go surfing. That would be pretty awesome. If I'm out that way, Charles, I'll be sure to reach out and you know we can set up a meetup out there because uh, it would be pretty awesome. You know, 
I'm a little scared of sharks in the ocean, but I would totally do it because I get the adrenaline rush. Um, although when I was in Hawaii, I went into a shark cage and had sharks swimming around, which was pretty awesome. I, when I go to in a couple of years, we want to go to South Africa. I want to get into the shark tank with, uh, I want to get into a cage with great white swimming around me. So like I had this like adrenaline rush with these types of crazy, uh, you know, animals that would just chew me up and give me the opportunity. Wilson says, would you make a video on Turkish Skiles and Miles partner word booking? I've heard some redemptions that are steel. So Wilson, I could do it. I actually thought about, cause right after I did my Hawaii video, it broke that you could actually get a really good value to Hawaii with them. So I could definitely do a value on that. Are you talking more so about Hawaii? Because that, that's a really good offer, opportunity there with Turkish Airlines. Uh, but there are some sweet spots there. Uh, so I could definitely take a look at that. Or talk more about Hawaii, though, let me know in the comments. Um, let's see. It's great that business card that count toward 524. Many people think I'm crazy. I'm learning to stop sharing this information with people that don't understand how this works. And I think people are always going to look at you crazy until you make that redemption. And they go, wait a minute. How did you just travel? How did you do that? What, you, what are you talking about? You only travel for $20 across the world or $100 across the world. And they're like, that's that I I'm looking, it's like $3,000 for me to do that. So people always are skeptical until they either A, do it or see that you're doing it consistently. And like, how are you traveling so much? I mean, I had, I had family skeptical for a while, for a long time, for quite a while until we were traveling like six to 10 times a year and spending very little out of pocket to do it. So it was pretty awesome. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> Waller, you should get a gold plated credit one card. Yeah, that's on my list. Um, <laughs> oh man. It's funny. Like speaking of that, like, uh, uh, yeah, let's see. Janelle says I have two, eight authorized user cards, two credit card, two credit cards, finger hut, credit, credit one, one loan of self. My TransUnion FICO score is 770. I have been building credit. So what are the next credit card that you recommend? So if I take a look at that, uh, take a look at that. You have what? The, lo the loan doesn't count towards your 524. Like a personal loan won't count towards that. So it it's the way I look at it, Janelle, is you have two, two personal credit cards. If you have two personal credit cards, I might be, a question actually be what's your utilization rate? Because uh, that that'll depend too on what credit cards. So like even though you might be under 524, let's say if your utilization is say 50%, it's really hard to say go for a chase card because they're going to probably look at that and it's a negative factor. Um, so my question actually would be what's your utilization rate amongst your, your credit uh, as a whole? Um, let's see. Does the wishlist have to be one that still exists or one that you'd missed that has been deleted a long time? Hey, Chris, let me know whichever one that is, man. Hit, hit or miss, like one that you wish you would have gotten, one that's still available. Let me know both. AMX gold card. Gold card is a solid card. But I think it's always funny when I said I canceled mine, people I think took that as like, I thought it was a bad card. I think it's a great card. It just doesn't work out for me. Like if it works out for you, it's really hard to top that card for a lot of spending. Toss that between AMX, the Aspire, and IHG. IHG, interesting. I think it's a, it, uh, that is a good good keeper card. The CNB Crystal Vicina, Estal, I think that is a great card. It's an undervalued card as well for a premium card. I know we spent a lot of time looking at the platinum and the reserve and the prestige. Even I'm a big fan of the altitude reserve. Like that's that Crystal Beast Infinite card, a lot of value there. Let's see the platinum card. Too hard to swallow that annual fee. That is a definitely a hard annual fee to swallow, Reckless. I agree with you, man. Um, if if they could drop it or add, what I I would feel like it would be worth it if I didn't have to like jump through hoops to get all my credits. Like I don't want an allowance style. I don't want an allowance style of using my credits. Like if I want to go spend $200 on a, on an Uber for like one kick-ass ride, like let me do it. I shouldn't have to be bogged down by like, all right, well I got my $10 or my, well, my $15 allowance now. Like, let me just take a, let me go up two blocks so I can use it. Like, I think it's just stupid. All right, let's see. Um, if I'm understanding your recommendation not to chase after the high, let, well, let's see. If I'm understanding your recommendation not to chase after the high bonus points and seek lesser points instead or not. So, and I would say you want, so it's, it's a kind of a combination. You want to look for a big bonus, but look for bonus cards with big bonuses that fit into your long-term plan. Because there are some cards out there. Let's say, let's say if you're somebody who's looking to fly, um, business class the for a lot of things you know the capital and venture card i think is a great card i think when they added transfer partners it's been really good but long term that's really not going to help you 
reach a lot of potential with transfer partners that are pretty one, the ecosystem is very poor. Two, it's just double mileage, again, great multipliers. And like the transfer rate's not ideal. So you want to look at cards that fit into your rotation long term, but still give you quite a bit of value. Um, let's see, wish list, simply cash plus. Yeah, that's gone. Oh, the FNBO, that was a good card. Huntington Beach, the Huntington Voice business card, rewards, ABOC 5X. Those are also good cards, Icarus. Do Hawaii, please. Traveling, planning a travel party of five next year. Estal, I don't know if you've seen my video for Hawaii bookings. The only thing I would say is that I am missing Turkish now that that has been out or released shortly after. But I do have a video on Hawaii and showing you the best options minus Turkish. If you can find space on United, you just want to send an email over to Turkish, 7,500 points one way in coach or 12,500 business class. But there are some good options depending on where you're at as well. So I would definitely take a look at that video. Um, and I'll try to work on something to get the Turkish Hawaii option out there as well for you. Let's see. Jay Gamble. Is it possible you're going to chase business card? You've had a personal card closed in the past in seven plus years. Did you close it, Jay Gamble? Or did someone or did they chase did Chase close it for you like as a charge off? Um, that would be my question because Chase has a long memory on that stuff, but it would depend, I guess, how it was closed. If you close it yourself, you should, yeah, I think you'd be okay. If they closed it for you for whatever reason, bankruptcy, charge off, whatever, it might be harder. Altitude, let's see. Ivan wishes my altitude reserve, which is bank in relation. I tried to apply for the US Bank Platinum, tried to do too many inquiries. I need to slow my pace. Yes, Ivan, that is something I would definitely do with us bank you want to definitely slow down if you want to get in with them you could also look to open like a bank account with them as opposed to a credit card you know you don't get the hard pull for it sometimes they even have you know checking account bonuses uh, that gets you in with them as well let's see very really good sharks out here so i'm golden that, that's good because you know i you know if i can look under the water i'm good charles if, if shark comes up and just like you know hits me you know i'm gonna be like nah uh, let's see better uh, do you recommend pass Word wallet app to compile all the in one location. You know, I just my passwords are typically written down on a spreadsheet personally, but I know some people like it because it's there. Uh, so I know pass the pass password wallet and was it pass password one is another app as well. I, I think it's password one. I can't remember the name of it, but there's another one out there. Uh, some of the apps are really good because they keep it secure and you can get a lot of value out of those as well. In the sense that like it keeps everything all together. CEO, thank you for taking my answer question. Much appreciated. Also, you can sign up for the Platinum card. We'll try for the incognito private browser mode on the Amex site. Good move. Do that. Um, CEO, I think you're going to get you, – you'll you, try a couple times. I personally try in uh, Chrome, in the Chrome browser. I usually get it a couple times. It'll pop up in a couple times. If you do for it, let me know if you get it. Uh, but I've had no issues finding it multiple times when researching, looking for that 100,000-point offer myself. Let's see, Kurt, uh, Kurt, Kern, uh, hey, do you know the cheapest you are redemption to connect one way in Asia, especially Southeast Asia, Thailand, with Europe, and the other way around? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, if you're looking to use like the excursionist bird, you can nest itineraries. But if you start looking for to connect one way, I mean, if you're one would, I mean, you are wouldn't be so good for it. But I definitely would say if you got into American Express, look at Asia Miles. You can do that, or even like Alaska Miles, you can do the one way like that with a stopover. Um, but as far as Ameri you are points with stopovers that allow it, look, you're going to want to basically you're basically reserved to the excursionist perk through United. That's the one I can think of right now. I'll have to double check though, uh, but I think that that's what I'm thinking about. Let's see. CMB Crystal is a dream card answer response for Turkish. Yes, why? And 12,500 by business. Yes, if you can find the business class space, that's always been difficult, Wilson, to get for that. Uh, 12,500 miles in business class on Turkish to fly basically United business class to Hawaii. Um, so I would look if you can get that. I did see, I think the other day, there was on Twitter, it was going out that it was like there was opportunities that it was open up from Newark, which like if given a chance, like Newark to Hawaii on, a, on would be great. Cause it's a long time in business, but um, I think I, that, but yeah, 12,500 one way in business class. Thank you. Do you think after getting this card, I should wait 45 days to increase the line of credit? Um, 
I, I would, uh, are you talking about, which card are we talking about, Ant? Let's see. Um, I would, instead of asking for an, an increased line of credit, because some banks would do a hard pool, I would probably get a new credit card after waiting 45 days. That's what I would probably do. Dave says, hey, Waller, when I get back to 0.24, I'm planning on starting with a few business cards. Can I do those and then still move on to five personal cards? Will they get weird about that? Dave, so one thing um, Chase does is you don't actually have a hard and fast limit to the number of Chase cards you can have. They give you a certain number of credit. You want to make sure you're spacing out your applications. I wouldn't go like hog wild and be applying for one. You know, I would probably space out more than every 30 days, probably like every 60 days if you're doing that. But what's going to happen is that you're going to max out your credit and you're basically going to apply for a card. And like, you've reached your credit. You're like, okay, I want to transfer $5,000 from my freedom card to open up this Chase Inc. card, whatever it may be. Or if you have business cards, transfer from your business to a personal card. But you can do that. Um, so it's not a hard, fast limit. It's more total credit. Just be be slow in applying for them. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And Chase will always outrun you if you try to outrun them. Um, so that's what I would do. Uh, wish list. Let's see. Chase Inc. Cash. Christine B. The Hell Inspire. The Zinc. Let's see. It's great. You get ad benefits. That'd be really cool. Let's see, tip for people seeking bigger bonuses on American Express. Not only incognito, but different browsers, Chrome. Try VPN from different cities. I got the top out for via VPN. That does work as well. Doctor of Credit actually has, I don't, you might have to Google it, but like you can look through one of the Chinese websites. It's really like, but you can do it basically like VPN to a Chinese website and like potentially get the 100,000 point platinum offer. That's an option out uh, as well. So, um, you can do that. Let's see. Hey, thanks for hey, thanks for the answer. But the Europe SC nation one way. I didn't mean with stopovers. Cheapest one way. So I often do that route. I you know I would take a look. At, you know from connecting in Europe. You're probably. I mean, they they might tack on. They might tack on two two options for you. There is itinerary. So. Uh, They'll probably check United because they're not going to pass on fuel surcharges. I know British Airways are going to you're going to get really high with the amount of mileage based on how it is. You might be able to look at Emirates now on a pay ticket and upgrade. That's an opportunity as well. Like get a cheap fare and upgrade it. That's what I would potentially do. Um, have a good night. How to get a great 800 credit score? Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you very much. Let's see. Um, let's see. I don't know if you were the free one, but I, but I think you could manage the contest of 40,000 to far away as a special guest. That would be actually really fun. I read, uh, Greg and Nick over there quite a bit. That would be a lot of fun to do something like that. 40,000 miles and make it happen. They're really, really good. Like I, they are far better at the award travel stuff. I read all the time, but like, they're like wizards at it. Like they are so good. It's really, it's really it's really awesome to see what they come up with because like some of the stuff is just so ingenious. Um, let's see. What's my favorite non chase business card, non chase business card. You know, if I had to pick one, man, I like that blue business plus double points everywhere. No annual fee. I still get access to partners. I think that might be my favorite business card, uh, out there. That's non chase. Hey, David, how's it going, man? I am doing fantastic. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Let's see. Um, do you, Charles, do you think any credit card company would ever come out with a credit card where you could add benefits that would determine your fee? Ooh, Charles, you're like getting in on something. I want to do a video on so bad. So one thing I've always thought of, um, my camera down. one thing I've always thought of was wouldn't it be great? Because like, Banks want us to use their cards, right? We want benefits, and they want us to use their card. They want to get an interchange fee, maybe hold a balance. What I always thought would be great is, like, I have a wallet full of cards. I mean, Jesus, I have so many cards in here that I don't even use. But there's benefits on those I would love to have. And I think it would be great if, let's say, American Express had wallet use them, for example, has a base model. And they said, okay, here's your base. You're going to earn X number of points per dollar. If you want to earn more points in this category, we're going to upcharge you. 
basically you could build a custom card with lounge access, whatever you want on it, and they would charge you a fee. And then you would basically pay that fee. And I think some people would actually do this because one, they wouldn't have to juggle so many cards and it would potentially be worth it for them. So I think being able to build a custom card like would be great. I would love to build a custom card in the sense that basically I use one card and you know I would would be great. So I think I did one point it was called the zinc card. The, the zinc. Um, you know, I think we're in a different spot now where potentially you could you could get away with that. Cause like think of all the things, like think if you didn't have to hold the freedom, freedom unlimited, chasing cash and the reserve to get that. If you could combine that all together and you know the benefit and maybe be in there. Some people would be cool just juggling it. But I know I, I know there are people who'd be like, I might pay a little bit more to have just one single card to have that benefit and get like a decent bonus as well. So, you know, I personally would probably juggle it, but I think it would be great if we had the opportunity to customize a card to give us the ability to make, okay, well, like the gold card for me, I don't spend a whole lot on US grocery stores. Let me switch that out with something else that I could earn 4X on that would be beneficial for me. I feel like I'm getting benefit. I'm gonna be willing to spend that money on that card. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and will I need to clear inquiries off if you're getting several cards? Also, will it drop an eight? Well, so, and every time you apply for a card, they pull a hard pull on your credit's going to drop anywhere from about three to five points. And when that happens, you know it should rebound as long it re, should rebound in about four to six months, depending on like your utilization as long as you're making your payments, which hopefully you're doing that anyways. Um, and it'll bounce back, and it should help out as well. So will it drop? Yeah, it'll drop every time you apply for a new card. They take a hard pull on. But I wouldn't necessarily say clear them. Um, you know, uh, you just want to manage them. Let's see. What do you think of the City Plus Rewa or City Rewards Plus? With round, all purchases up to the nearest 10 points. You could fund your Amazon account 50 cents at a time, get 10% back, 5,000 spend. You could do that, Icarus. Uh, but they do have the term in there. If they find you're abusing it, they can shut you down. I have a feeling they're keep going to keep eyes on that at some point. Um, for me, I don't, I'm not going to take the time to do that, but you're right. Like if someone's willing to do the time for that, it's it's a good opportunity. Because you're earning, let's say five, 10, 15 points per dollar, even a, your example, a lot of points per dollar. So I think that's a good opportunity. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, you could do it. Absolutely. It's a good opportunity if someone is willing to put in that effort. Um, let's see. Yes, I would agree, Chris. If that's, if you're doing that, they're definitely going to probably shut you down. Like They're just getting tougher on these things. So if you're trying to game the system, it's out there. Like, And now we see American Express not issuing points, which on gift cards, shutting you down. Like They're grouping things together. So do I have any other questions? Any other questions out there for me? We've been doing this for like an hour and 20 minutes. Um, if there's no other um let's see let's see why purchase protection on the freedom but not the freedom unlimited you know i have to actually look deep into that um i'm not exactly that's that's a that's a good question if that's the case um <laughs> well, they had them on both maybe not um but yeah that's a good question why on one not the other probably so you have to hold both they want you to hold both cards how did I established a relationship with the U.S. Bank. I had the U.S. Bank Flexport card. So a couple years ago, I opened it up. I was targeted for it was a pre-qualified offer. It was spend five hundred dollars, get twenty five thousand Flexport points. So I opened up a card there. I held it. I actually converted that card to the U.S. Bank Cash Plus card. So I had my relationship there for quite a while to in order to do that. Um, and then I, then I went for the, the altitude reserve. It went to pending and like two days later I got an email saying it was approved. Is there a good card that we should use to transfer points to? And do you mean like as far as chase, as far as programs or like with chase, like you can train, there's a lot of different programs. So I would be, you know, you need either the, the altitude, res I mean, I'm sorry, you need either the, the, the Sapphire reserve, the preferred or ink preferred in order to transfer your points out. I wish I could transfer my AARP card to another freedom card. That would be awesome if you could cross product change to different families like you could with City. Um, let's see. I'm traveling to Japan next week. I hear they're cash society. Any idea how to get a pin for my credit cards? Mostly I have Chase with a few Amex cards. I also have a card. David, what I would actually say 
which are, if you're going to do, you're going to get charged a cash advance fee. If you're going to go to an ATM withdraw money, have you looked into the Charles Schwab debit card? No annual fee or no foreign transaction fees, no minimum account fees, reimburses you ATM fees, you know, and there's a hundred dollar bonus on it as well with, you know, in general. So um, you could reach out to, you can actually I think if I did it right, you could, you can set American express online, but I would be careful doing that just because you're going to get, um, you're going to get a cash advance if you're using your credit cards for it. And that could be, you know, 20 plus percent. So, um, I would definitely look to get like the Charles Schwab debit card. Uh, can you go straight to the Alta Reserve straight from the US Bank business card? You know, I, I think you should be able to. It just says you need a relationship for five business for five business days. It doesn't specify personal. So I would definitely say. <laughs> oh, I hear what you're saying, David. For chip and pin, um, not you could reach out, but I don't. American Express and Chase cards aren't chip and pin, but typically that is at more at unmanned kiosk or gas stations. Um, so chip and pin, you know, if you're going to most most terminals, like if you're going to places unless it's an unmanned kiosk usually it's not chip and pin just um but as a cash society it's more so cash um yeah i i haven't i had some buddies go over to japan recently one that lived over there and they didn't have a whole lot of issues so let's say brian 22 came by to call quick like thanks thanks brian for stopping by i appreciate it thanks for hitting the thumbs up button as well um let's see do you value do you value double dipping, triple dipping points over protections? Um, Wilson, it depends on the amount of money I am spending on a product. So if I, for example, when I bought my MacBook Pro, um, I would prefer travel protections over a couple points because this is an expensive laptop. On my TV, yeah, I want travel, I want protections over the extra points just in case something happens. But I mean, if we're talking a couple hundred dollars or something where I can be like, it's not the big deal. Um, you know, I would probably go for trouble, triple dipping using gift cards as well as, in, as opposed to the protections. Barclay does chip and pin. That's true. Um, you know, my USAA card does chip and pin, which has been pretty fantastic for me. That's going with me over to London next week. Let's see. Am I anticipating any rumors or any credit card news that most people don't know about? I wish I had connections champ to know that. Um, I don't have any, I'm not anticipating any rumors per se. Um, let's see if I had to anticipate something. If my, I guess my big thing I think is city, we're going to see them eventually switch to 48 months. Something I've, I'm wondering because it's all across the forums. It's all across everywhere is will Chase start including their ink business cards in their 524 calculations for their cards only? Maybe they don't include like American Express business cards, but they know, like, I, I don't know if anybody from Chase is watching this, but there are plenty of blogs and videos out there that say, start with the ink cards, they don't count towards 524. What maybe they start saying, okay, just the ink cards count towards 524, so it reduces the number of cards people are getting, but they don't count like American Express. That's something I think we could see doing because it's so widespread to say, chart with them Chase ink cards because you're going to get, they don't count towards your 524 status. And Chase has been pretty sneaky on stuff where they kind of release stuff. So, I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be shocked that happened. Let's see. Uh, do you know if any transferized credit card would be considered spending? Um, I don't. Please read follow up from above. Let's curtain curtain uh, curtain curtain. I don't or I don't see the. Please read follow up from above. I don't. Um. I don't, I don't see any other follow-up from above. So um, I don't know if that'll count for spending. Typically, I think some of those do count as a cash advance. Um, or is that many cards offer TSA pre-check? Are there any offer that world TSA enrollment uh, would cancel? So if you're talking like global entry, a lot of them offer either TSA pre-check or global entry credit. Uh, and so you, a lot of cards will be offering that as well. So Charles said, Chase just changed their bonus freedom for no longer 3% and further 20,000 spread. I actually think that's great, Charles. I think that that it was actually a like, smoke and mirror thing for them. I think it was actually bad for a lot of people unless they were big spenders. The $200 bonus with, a, with, with and 1.5X is actually, I think, better long-term for people. 
especially for lower spend, it takes a lot of spend on there. So I would definitely, I think it's a big, I think it's a benefit. I think they're realizing maybe people won't sign up for it as much. Uh, but some people couldn't do the math that they're like, I'm already in three X. This is great. Um, but it wasn't as good as the, the old offer. Um, uh, let's see. Did your points post from the Ebates LifeLock purchase? I'm still mad at myself, David. Um, uh, it's pending. They're showing that they're going to post here in the next couple months. So like I'm fully anticipating them coming in. So like it's showing as pending in my account. They're there waiting to just be deposited. So they're not going anywhere. So I would say, yes, they're coming in. I'm pretty excited about that. That basically <laughs> replenished my account for my Brussels Amsterdam trip in October. Um, it was. <laughs> um, yeah, the follow-up. Yep, you want to check either United or check the travel portals. Um, or I, like I said, you could potentially check uh, maybe like a cheap, cheap flight with Emirates and upgrade that way. Um, you just want to find it. You could use what I would say is use Google Flights, see the price, and then I would check accordingly to the Chase Transfer Portal. Um, I hear you. David was in Belgium at the time, couldn't sign up. Let's see. All right, everyone. I think I've answered all the questions that have been there. I've been, oops, I've been doing it. For, we've been here for an hour and a half. Thank you so much for stopping by. I should actually, um, let's see. I don't want everyone to know if you haven't already seen. I do have merchandise, Waller's Wallet t-shirts and stuff like that. I think in the next couple days, um, it, it'll actually be a 20% off code that if you wanted to do that and you wanted to purchase something like that, there's 20% off coming um, as well. So if you want to do that, great. If you want to support the channel, um, you can use the links on the website. I have just links in the description below. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. Um, what do you, let's see, Wilson, what do you think the next perk in travel card should be? Globe, cell phone protection. Um, I would love to see the opportunity for airline cards to pull points with no cost. I would love to be able to pull my United miles or Delta miles. I think that would be great. Um, I think that would be fantastic. Um, mobile passport credit would be nice. Clear credit would be nice. We all see the, the, the stuff there. Those would be good. Um, those are kind of what I'm thinking right now would be pretty, would be pretty nice. Someone's got to do something different. I'm tired of seeing the same crap. Um, if you don't do, if you, if you don't make any slight differences, a Wi-Fi credit would be great. Cause like, you know, you go on like a, a Panasonic or go, go Wi-Fi plane. Like it'd be great to have like a generalized Wi-Fi credit. Like kind of like what Southwest does on their Southwest planes with their performance card. Um, let's see if I can find the comparison. I'll screenshot it, send it via email or text. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. Let's see. Gold plated food stamp card. Your thoughts. Um, <laughs> that's good. All right, let's see. Um, do not know what we will do with our no without your knowledge. Thank you, Ann. I appreciate that. I'm always here to try to help out and give everything I can to you guys and gals. Um, let's see. It's just, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. I appreciate the support. You know, the channel's growing more than I ever thought it would. You know, some days are uh, some days are looking, it's growing faster than others, but I do appreciate it. You know, uh, the award booking stuff, you know, I enjoy doing it. Uh, speaking of which, you know, I'll be traveling in most part of September midway through the month. So, like, I think there might just be one award booking demonstration in the month of September, but I'll be kicking it back probably to two times back in October. Um, so, that would be uh, something to consider. That might, that might be happening. So, just one month of downtime on the award booking demonstrations. If you have one, I do go to the website, put in your request. Um, I do try to take different ones. I have a lot for Hawaii, so I'll get to those. But I think. You all would be kind of bored saying me just do a bunch of Hawaii ones week in and week out. Um, so I do put those in. If you have an award booking demonstration, I do pick one typically every other week. Um, let's see. I would love to see a credit card that offers a bonus on medical. The, actually, David, there is – it's a BBVA card. I didn't – I think I saw this one the other day. They offer three or five X on medical payments. So take a look at that card. That caught my eye. Uh, one last question since you have time. Just want an AMX. Where, where would it show seventy five on the on the website or to another website? Um, let's see. So, um, you you'd want to. It'll just be on the American Express's website. You'll go to Incognito, Google AMX Platinum hundred K offer, and it'll basically come up in big letters when you click on American Express saying 
welcome bonus special offer for you, 75000 after a 5000 spend. <laughs> Wouldn't it be balling to buy your groceries with a food stamp card, gold, plated, showing off? Oh, I guess. It's fine. I, you know, I, I guess I'll say it. Like, th I've had plenty of comments. I've seen it. Like, my video yesterday was not a shot at Ryan at all. It, my video was shot before that video went live. It just happened to be the day after. I have no problem with Brian. He and I speak to different audiences. It was, yes, it was bad timing. Like, I, I know I got some comments and stuff, but like, I legit, like, Brian's a funny dude. Like, I've, you know, I've, I've enjoyed working with him on other projects before, but, you know, I think some people thought I was taking shots at him. I legit have no problem with Brian. It was not a shot at him at all. It was legitimately. <laughs> I did, it pops up in my feed of things like I've seen a bunch of other cards because, you know, when you're Googling credit cards all the time to look at stuff. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Like I see stuff, I click on it, I review it. Like I don't think I have the product, but I realize like our audience is different. It was never a shot of Brian. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I just say what's on my mind. If in, in in all honesty, if I if I was going to call someone out on something, I would say their name. I'm not the person who's going to send like subliminal shots at someone. If I had a problem with the way someone was doing something, I would I would call them out directly. I have no problem with Brian, zero whatsoever. I think he he's his stuff is super funny. He's got good content, but like I know it's just bad timing. But like you know, I'm not. It is what it is. But like I have no problem with Brian. It was never a shot at him. Uh, which program did I use for my UK flights? Roth, I actually used uh, my Avio. I used my altitude reserve points. Flew three of us, 59,000 altitude reserve points on British Airways um, from Boston to London. And then I used 43,000 sky miles, each adult round trip to Amps or for Amsterdam and Brussels. So and it was like $160 in taxes and fees for all three of us. So it was pretty expensive that way. I think Brian's going to take an accidental shot of you. You know, it, it is what it is, man. Like I said, it's not, it was nothing personal against Brian. I had nothing. Like, it was not a meant. It was not shot at him whatsoever. Someone had to say, you're a credit card patriot. You know, I think there's certain, like, all right, I'll get my spiel on this. There are certain products out there I believe in, and I think there's certain products out there I don't believe in. If I believe in it, I, I will review it, and I, and I will give a positive spiel on it. I think I've done that with, for example, the footrest I use or the turtle pillow I use. But, you know, I, I like into the idea of like, I think it's an interesting concept for what they're doing with that card. It just, to me, it doesn't make sense. And it, like I said, I just, I'm not like, to me, the value in points and miles is earning points and miles and utilizing them. It's never been to me about what a card looks like, especially to move towards mobile payments. Like, I think it's silly people, they, they give out metal cards anyways. Like, I can't, I prefer plastic cards myself because it's just, it's just easier in my wallet. But like I'm using my mobile wallet everywhere. Every place is now accepting Apple pay or Google pay, you know? So, I mean, it is what it is. So like, um, you know, like, I, like and I, I wholeheartedly mean that it was never a shot at Brian. I have no problem with Brian. He's, he's very funny. He's got good stuff over there. Our audiences are slightly different than what we look for, but like, that's okay. That's what makes the game so great. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't, I don't, that's, it is what it is, but I mean, I, I wholeheartedly admit it wasn't a shot of Brian at any, any space, any, any way, shape or form. I even went over his Facebook group and, and put it out there, whether people believe me or not, they, they can take their own from it. But if I was to ever call someone out on something, you can, you can go back and look at other videos. I, you know, I've called out, you know, TPG and others on stuff because I think it's crap and what sometimes they do. So. If I'm going to call it out, I'm going to call him by name. I have no problem with Brian. I was never shot, none to be a shot at him. That video was recorded. So I, if, like, I shoot my stuff in batches um, to make it easier because I send it off to a video editor and he gets back to me. But like, um, you know, so that video was shot weeks before, a couple weeks before that went live. So bad timing. It, it's, it's kind of funny. It kind of happened that way. But I saw it and went, oh, we'll see how this goes. Um, what pro, oh, let's see. He's doing a video about making fun of map, map, US map tattoos. So that's fine. I have another one coming. I'm gonna get like I'm gonna get more on this arm. I think at some point, a couple like passport stamps I've done. 
So um, let's see. Brian paid for his Lion card, played it with his Apple card. <laughs> it's all good fun. He likes the flex. He does like the flex. Like I said, he he. I have no problem with him. It's just different to what we look for. And I think he even said like our philosophies on stuff are just a little different. There's nothing wrong with that, and that there's no wrong way to play the game. Gold cards are advantage of people. They target people. He goes. <sighs> I'll leave it at that. You know what I mean? Like legit, Brian. If you're watching, I have no problem with you, man. Um, and I was never a shot at you. So, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I got your back. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that, man. Do I need to get over my hangup? Not using Hilton primary points for trip under five days. Um, you know, value is value, man. Like I, hi, if you can get value at under five days, great points are just going to devalue at some point Roth. So I would definitely, if you can get decent value out of it, I would look to burn them. Cause like, Marriott points, you might be able to get decent value. Hilton points, you might be able to get decent value. But, like, I wouldn't necessarily look for five days or more. Sure, you get that added benefit. But if you're getting the ability to save money in a good location or maybe some upgrade as well. So it is that's what I would go there. I mean, it's not terrible. I'm actually looking to use, like, for four days over in uh, Brussels at Hilton. Like, yeah, I'm going to forego that fifth day because I'm moving on. But, like sucks but i mean i'm gonna get decent value out of my points there if i look to do that or use airbnb i'm glad you say what you say you're the only person on youtube who tells like really it is not just the gold plate of card but every missed opportunity other youtubers come with the reward and success with being under cost and other that they don't exist yeah i think that's one thing i have with the travel game in general people want to talk about they travel for free um and really rarely anything's ever free like even even like that's why like in my videos like i'll say i travel for, i traveled this trip for zero out of pocket because like it may have cost me zero out of pocket, but it still wasn't free because I still pay the annual fees on my credit card. Like there is a difference between free and this this particular trip was no didn't cost me anything out of pocket. Uh, there's always under own underlying cost. My my stay, yeah. I, you're pre buying points with the annual fees, even if it's super cheap. Don't get me wrong. You're basically buying points at a super cheap value, but you're still buying the points. Like. There's, there's no free lunch in this game. Like in the only way I can say if you're doing that and is if like you're basically using your actual spend day in and day out, even people who liquidate gift cards, you know what I mean? Like there's still a cost to that either in time or you're buying them at a super cheap liquidating, whatever. So like there's a lot of other things that go into things outside of just like, like you got like people just see the Instagram post and like, oh man, that's so great. But like, yeah, like am I taking four or five cards? And while someone goes, I flew for free, like. Yeah, but how much do those credit cards cost someone? So, you know, it, it, they're, it's all for show. A lot of people do stuff for show. And, like, I'm not, I, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, I've flown business class a few times. It's great. But, like, you know, there's a realistic expectation. Like, my, I, my channel's always been with the impression that I do it for people the average person who's looking to fly has maybe two weeks of vacation a year, has a family of three, four, five, looking to just get away. How can they use their points in the most efficient manner? Most people aren't flying business class, judging by like the questions I ask in the group, question I ask on the channel. Most of you aren't flying business class. You're just looking to get from A to B as cheap as possible. And if that's the case, you know what? That's my audience. Like I'm not looking to gear up for people like the, for the small minority, sure. I'll talk about business class because like people do want to hear about it, but like, yeah, like if given the opportunity, like if it's 10,000 points more per person, like it'd be great. But a lot of you aren't doing that. So like my audience is want to, I want to show people on the day to day how they can get to that family vacation, how they can take that next trip for very little out of pocket. Cause like, you know, if you can fly to Europe for, for seven to 10 days for, um, for seven to 10 days, um, for like 200 bucks, like that's, that's a hell of a deal. So like, that, that's kind of where I go. Like nothing's free. I don't, I kind of get annoyed when people say like I'm traveling for free cause it's very rarely free. I know my cards have annual fee except for my 5% Amazon. Yep. Absolutely. I think that's it. I call those Icarus. I call cards that don't have, I call that an indirect annual fee. And someone's like, well, it's a zero annual fee. But like, you need to pay another fee in order to get that increase rate. So I call those indirect annual fees, but absolutely, I agree. Some people want to do stuff for show. I'll just show them my bank account slip. Man, I, you know, I, it's, it's true. Like people, a lot of people will that fear, that FOMO, fear of missing out your Instagram post. So it, it's a pretty interesting dynamic. Like I post on my Instagram, 
it's never like, <laughs> I don't think my stuff's truly glamorous. I don't know if flying for in coach is glamorous, but like, you know, it's, I like to share my travels with you guys. Dark child. Let's see. Hey, love your videos. What's a good way to trigger the hundred dollar AMX Delta platinum credit now that you can't use the gift card method. So with that, actually dark child, you don't actually have to buy a Delta gift card with that. Any Delta purchase will actually trigger that. So if you're a flying, you can purchase a gift card for that, like, or you can purchase something on the plane and it'll trigger. So like a $2 charge will trigger the Delta Platinum $100 credit. I still think gift cards do trigger that as well. If I remember correctly, it's just not the, the Platinum card, like the AMX Gold card. The Delta Platinum, you can still do that and get that $100 credit. It's super small charge on a Delta flight. will trigger it for you too. I uh, appreciate love your videos. Thank you, Esta. I appreciate the support. Um, Let's see. Has anyone figured? Has anyone figured out a way to trigger the hundred dollar global entry credit by buying something else? From TSA? I don't think so, Chris. I think it codes a particular way, but that'd be interesting. I haven't seen that, anyways. Let's see, Braveheart. How you doing, Braveheart? Let's see, Dr dual streaming. What else are you watching right now? You watching David? O tra tra watching Tropical Explorer? Because I, I mean, he should be on right now too. He started like forty six minutes ago. I think it's build department home school security is the HS only thing in the store border. I don't think so. Tell David I say hello. <laughs> he stopped by a few minutes ago, so or a little bit ago. So I might stop in on his stuff here in a few minutes. I'm about to shoot reshoot second time award booking demonstration for Wednesday. Because the damn award uh, space changed literally an hour after I wrote down everything he was ready to go. So that's the nature of a word travel. You see something you like, you book it because an hour later it was gone. And I have to go through and flip a couple things and shoot it for a second time. Uh, award bookings. I'm a cashback guy, not a booking guy. But Icarus, that's what makes me different on YouTube. I, I actually go through, I see people comment on some of the larger channels, like, well, they do award booking stuff. And um, what I find interesting is that like, I they, I don't think you're going to see a lot of other people get into it. Maybe, Maybe they will. And I'm not saying that they don't know this stuff, but like it just takes a lot of time. Uh, some of these, some of these word booking videos take me six hours of research, four or five, six hours of research for re repositioning, finding the flights, and then once I find the opportunities, what's the best way to book those flights? I mean, I could cheap out and just kind of say use the travel portal, but what benefit would you be getting from that, right? Uh, so the City Prestige a card to get any more, or the Premier is a better one, Charles? I actually think the Premier card. Uh, for most people, it would probably be really good. Better bonus, lower annual fee, better redemption through the tra uh, transfer through their travel portal. Um, on top of that, you still get access to the transfer partners. If you don't have a card with lounge access and a bunch of other stuff, maybe. But like outside of that, there's just so many opportunities for other cards to have overlap or pretty close to decent earning rates. I'm not sure if it's worth that 495 annual fee anymore. What do you think about starting a YouTube channel now? Brand new about cards, money, making rebates, etc. Too late, too saturated. Icarus, I don't think it's ever too late to start. Um, you know, if you put out good content, people will come. I think that's what it really comes down to. Um, if you have info, like I think what I would say is one, you got to just start. Your first videos are the worst. If you go back to some of my first videos, they're cringeworthy. But I would definitely look at channels like um, so Think Media, Sean Canal. Roberto Blake, um, Nick, uh, Nick, uh, Nick Neiman, uh, Nick Neiman, Neiman, uh, about ways to really like, there's so many other things that go into just shooting the video. There's the, the keywords, the tags, the other stuff that goes into it. There's a lot of stuff people don't see that you see the finished product. There's a lot of stuff that goes in the back end. So I would start there, but then just from there, shoot record, man, just press record and go for it. Like you're going to make mistakes, roll with it, but you know, you grow from it and you find ways that you improve and how you can um, benefit from it. Like I've made my process has changed so much in the year and a half of so the year and it was almost two years that I've been doing YouTube. So like, so there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, so I would definitely take a look at that, but just go for it, man. You know, if you have good content, it, the hardest part is starting. I remember, so it took 12 weeks for me to get my first hundred subscribers. And now I get a hundred subscribers roughly every 10 days. So like, it just is a process. And like, some of these channels get way more subscribers in a month than I think like I think I will ever get. So you just gotta go for man. Um, let's see. I'm waiting for the next eBay deal. You fine? So we're at 80% life locked. Slow down. Um, I typically Wilson, if you haven't already, join my Facebook group. I typically post stuff in there like these deals. I don't I don't want to saturate the YouTube community tab too much. 
Uh, but join my Facebook group. <clears throat> I'm pretty active in showing deals in there. Um, just a different way for me to show stuff. So you aren't there, check that out. Um, I think it's, if you go to the channel, the, my homepage of the channel, there's a Facebook click. You can click there. I'll take you over to it. Um, if I still have a big channel, it will swallow me up by reason my ideas, which I invented. That's, that's a challenge, man. You know, sometimes you'll see videos out there you, that you've put out or other people have put out already. It's a small niche in certain things. So that might happen. Um, thing is though, con pe content trumps. So like if there's good stuff out there, I would definitely go with it. Just go for it, man. Like think about the channels that like are in the credit card niche that I'm competing against. If you want to say competing, but like, I think we're all like, we all work together, but like competing against like their stuff they do and they already have their audience. And all you're doing now is like, you're just building on like your own stuff. Like, you have your own spin. So even if someone, let's, let's say someone steals your idea, you have your own spin to it. And I think it's what draws people into things. Um, is it, true you get value? is it true you only get value from a mission report that you book business or first class? I don't think that's the only value. It's the best value though. I mean, you can still get a lot of value from coach tickets, uh, but it's going to be a little bit harder to do. Uh, but you get you get the max value from alliance partners and business or first class poop head. <laughs> Love the name, by the way. Uh, let's see. Do, do YouTubers steal your finds and retell them for their own viewers? I don't think so, Chris. I, I mean, this niche is so small that like, Think about it. The when, the when the green card is refreshed someday, like I'm gonna post a video on it. You know, Shufu, Sebi, David over at Wise Flies. We're all gonna post our own spin on it. So like, it's just gonna happen. And like, even if you have what you think is maybe a, a unique idea, you know, how many times like ranking ultimate reward cards, how to do certain things. Like, we've all kind of done it. We just have our own take. So things are similar. Um, I don't think I've ever found. Thanks, Chris A. I appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, if you ever find someone who takes something that's similar, I would definitely, um, I would definitely just go for it. You, you don't don't let that worry about things. Um, let's see. Another quick, what software editing do I use? I actually use iMovie CEO. So like, it's free. It's on my iMac. I don't have my, my edits are basically just simple jump cuts with a couple picture and pictures. So iMovie is really where I go, but I actually do use a video editor now for a lot of my stuff for my, like, so I typically, like I said, I shoot in batches and I send that out to him and he edits it down and gets it back to me. It saves me time so I can create more videos for you because the editing process takes a while. I've gotten more efficient at it as, as I've gone, but some of these videos take a lot of time researching and and then that a lot of time for pictures to go into things. So like if I can just grab them and send them comes back as a finished product, it's definitely great. Um, I only started doing that though, after I hit for realistically YouTube monetization, uh, cause it helps offset my cost. Um, one thing about one good thing about Amex points, you can transfer one to two, which is good. If you can talk about something, he'll say, I think that is a good way. I think that is good. Um, you know, I think that's pretty, pretty nice. Charles, I one I'm hoping what comes back is the idea or the ability to transfer at one to three with a transfer ratio bonus and then get to like the 0. 0.5 cents per point at Hilton through Amazon. That was a really good loophole as a whole. Nice tats. You get them when you travel. No, I actually got it down the street, but I yeah, I'm a big I'm a big fan of travels. So I got this one here and like I'll end up getting um I have my past passport, so I'm gonna get um so my passport and some places I've been to. On here, because like travel definitely just means a lot to me. Um, say no credit card that pays me hundred twelve no spend requirement needed. I have three card no, no and post. If I do it, will people steal it? Hey Chris, if you post a video on something, someone's gonna see it and they're gonna probably try to duplicate it um, in the sense of talking about it. Um, if it's something that you don't necessarily want known, I would keep it quiet. Uh, but if you're okay, like if you post something on, in, into the YouTube world and the Reddit world, whatever. Just know if someone sees it, there's a potential that someone could utilize it for a review. If you're afraid it's going to be, you're, if you're afraid it's going to nerf it, don't talk about it. If you're cool with it just being out there because maybe it generates more views for you, go for it. That's kind of my thought on it. Um, <laughs> so let's see. I think that's you know almost two hours now. I think I am going to call it uh, just because I do have to shoot this tonight uh, after this after we get off here because like. I need to do that crap. Um, let's see. Okay, last question, I think. So when are you travel gurus going to travel together? Would love to see that. 
it'd be cool to do a trip with some of those people. Um, I think some people are just so busy. I don't think it'll ever happen. Like I would love to do another collaboration with some of the channels we've seen in the past. Um, we just got to get together and do it. Um, so, so I know sometimes some of the bigger channels have commitments or just people are busy in general, even the smaller channels, people are busy in general. So um, it is fun to do the collaborations because you kind of get it, kind of get the everyone's viewpoint in one video. So on that note, if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you know somebody might benefit from this video, feel free to share it with me. We want to help support the channel. Simple ways to use the links on the website or in the description below. If you like learning about credit cards, points, miles, cash back, or just flat out traveling for less, hit that subscribe button down below. And I will see you all What's today. It's Saturday. I will see you all on Tuesday. Safe travels. Take care, everyone.